Well, folks, welcome back to another episode of Rethink Real Estate. On today's episode, I get to have a great conversation with Mr. John Crom. John has done an incredible John job along with his other significant other and partner in crime, Shannon Crom, with building a business that's based around video. They've created a YouTube channel that will be in the show notes here that you absolutely need to check out that has created this inbound nature of business that all of us would only strive to get to. The way that they've done it is through just resources that are available to all of us out there at the moment, starting off with a book all the way through to going to conferences and looking at other examples. There's no question that John is a charismatic character in front of the camera, but this model of the YouTube-based business and being the digital mayor in your area is something that in the beginning I might have been apprehensive about when they first brought it to me, but as I've seen this progress over the last number of years, I think they have a level of control over their business that a lot of people in the real estate space with envy. Hope you enjoy the episode. It's tremendous. Welcome to Rethink Real Estate. My name is Ben Brady, and this is a real estate podcast aimed to deliver sales strategies, marketing tips, and business insights from industry experts and myself to build a listing-focused business for the future. Let's get into it. John, welcome to Rethink Real Estate. Awesome. Uh, yeah, thanks for having me. Stoked to be here. It's interesting. There's very few people that I'm envious of when it comes to their demeanor in front of a camera. And if anybody has a chance to look at your videos in the way that you are when shooting your videos, I don't think that I can bring that level of energy. But let's cut the shit for a minute, okay? <laughs> how many takes does it get you? What? How many takes does it take you to get your video reels that you do? Like, is it like one or two or is it like, what are we talking here? Uh, so, all right. That's not a fair question because today is way different from, you know, four or five, six years ago when I started this. So before when I started, yeah, it was awful. Um, and, and, and the way that I shot the videos has evolved as well. So now it's not, t so now I can kind of just nail it. Most of the time I'll just, I'll hit it. I mean, yeah, of course I take two or three takes, but it's not like, you know, a ton of takes. Uh, and sometimes I'll nail it in the first one and we'll do a second take just because, just in case, or, you know, if I go off script a little bit, you know, something like that, you, you know, whatever. Like I know what I want to say in my mind because I've got a script and what I'm supposed to say, but I don't read it off a teleprompter. I just kind of go, okay, that's the gist of what I'm supposed to say. And then I'll nail the line. So sometimes I do a couple of takes, but other than that, I just do it now. So there's a there's a part of this that you and I have got a bit of a structure this interview that I want to go through and I want to go through all the nitty gritty and everything like that. But I've got a couple of quick fire questions in the beginning of this that I just want to throw at you is that how do you come up with how do you come up with all the content, mate? Like like legitimately what you guys have done and and the YouTube channel that you have and the volume of videos that you're putting out and the views that you're getting on your YouTube channel at this point when it comes to Bend, Oregon and moving there and just the general things that you guys go about within residential real estate in that sector. Like, what is your, like, do you and Shannon, who's your partner in crime, you know, do you guys sitting around having dinner with the kids and go, wait, we've got an idea. We need to write it down. Like, how does all this come up? Uh, I mean, we do think of ideas like that all the time. All the ideas just do kind of pop up. We'll just be in an office meeting and someone's talking about something. I'm like, that's good to know. We should tell people about <laughs> that, you know, but, but to be honest, most of it is, um, I mean, it's just kind of a, it's just kind of a concept called being, you know, the digital mayor of your town, right? So what do people want to know about your city? So, I mean, I think the video last week was best lunch spots in Bend. What are the five best lunch spots? And, you know, I'm careful not to say these are the five best lunch spots. These are just my five best lunch spots, but you know, then people get on there and be like, Oh, I don't like this one. Or I like this, and you, you know, forgot this one. I'm like, okay, sure. And it actually enables some good, some good, you know, conversation on the, on the YouTube channel. But um, yeah, just be in the digital mayor talking about things that are, uh, interesting that are in bend that are about bend. And then obviously you sprinkle in, you know, real estate knowledge as well. So you come across as the authority in the marketplace. I, I think that, you know, the thing that I want to do is take people on a little bit of a journey today, made in perspective of how you guys have gotten to where you are. You guys are one of the most successful teams within, when I say teams, it's just you and Shannon that are, that are running your own business. You guys have got two kids. Um, you guys, are the most normal people that I know, it's not like you guys are these 
outwardly big team people with 50 people working in your team and whatever it is, but you're doing a very high volume of business and it's gotten even higher over the last number of years based on your video presence. But the thing I want to do is start from the very beginning, mate, is usually I give a great deal of context to people in the introduction to our podcast, but I want to sort of start in the essence of video hasn't always been around for the both of you. Um, you know, mm-hmm. at the end of the day, you and Shannon weren't even, you know, I don't think Shannon was even full-time in real estate at, at one point, or right. you weren't even full-time in real estate at one point. So can you give us your, your little bit of a journey of starting in real estate into where you guys are now prior to video? Yeah, no, sure. Actually. Um, so yeah, this is my ninth year, I guess I'm coming up on 10 years in real estate and, uh, my wife started about six years ago now. So I had about a three or four year head start on her. Uh, when I got in, I had no idea what I was doing. Uh, zero, zero clue. I uh, had run a small business before that. My wife and I had run a coffee shop. We, we started a coffee shop kind of from scratch back in Tennessee and, and ran that for a number of years. Kind of got our MBA in business administration. And uh, then the, uh, you know, the, uh, the epic recession hit in 2008. And so we were fortunate enough that we had jobs waiting for us when we moved back to Bend. Uh, we were running a sports center and, and just, you know, running sports camps and, and soccer and hockey and just having fun with kids. And a few years into that, I was okay. <clears throat> that was fun. That was kind of my, uh, vacation away from my, you know, my coffee shop business. Cause that was extremely taxing. Uh, just didn't like people for a while. And, um, <laughs> so I was just, I was, yeah, I was over it, you know, I was just like, I just need to be away from people for a while. So I was playing with kids for a couple of years and that was just a blast. That was so much fun. And, uh, but it also, you know, I also became aware a few years in like, okay, well, uh, how am I going to actually, you know, really truly provide for my family and how am I going to, uh, you know, have a career in which I can, you know, see, you know, have, have a future and, you know, just playing with kids is so rewarding. And it's something that I actually still do to this day. I still coach uh, youth hockey to this day, but I didn't want it to be my full-time job. So, I, it's just a weirdest uh, circumstance. One of my, you know, one of the, one of the people that I was working with and training and coaching at sports center, his dad, uh, his dad was into fishing. And so we went down the river and, and went fishing together. And he said, have you ever thought about getting into real estate? And I said, sure. My dad was a builder. I'd seen almost every side of real estate. Uh, I didn't think that I wanted to be in real estate myself because, uh, there's some vanity there in it that I'm not a fan of. And, and, and that's, that's certainly not what I bring when I'm in real estate. And so I think that, uh, you know, I was like, all right, well, let's try it. Why not? So I got in it so naive. I mean, just had no idea what I was doing. Uh, you know, which, which can play to a benefit in, in the first degree sometimes. Yeah, sure. It can. Um, I'm also envious of people that, you know, uh, they've had family in the industry and they join a team and they just, they just get straight into it and, or they just, you know, you know, step in, can we swear on this? Yes. <laughs> they just step in shit and they're just <laughs> massively successful right off the bat. And so, uh, you know, because I didn't have that at all. I mean, it was, it was a struggle. It was a grind. Um, you know, she was still working at the sports center and I was trying to figure out how to do real estate and I had no idea what I was doing. I thought that, you know, the phone would call, the phone would, the phone would ring, uh, at the office and I would pick it up and someone would say, Hey, I want to buy a house. And I would take him out. And that just never happened. I mean, it, it's happened to me maybe twice ever, you know, uh, where I've actually taken a lead from a floor time, like all the way to closing and cashed a check. So yeah, the first year uh, was just like eye opening, and it was you know it was desperation time, obviously for a lot of agents. I'm sure that it is, but um, so then I kind of got into you know some coaching stuff and looking into coaching, and, and not necessarily like, like paying you know Tom Ferry to talk to you, but you know just people on YouTube that, that have all this real estate advice and all this real estate coaching. It's free on YouTube, and and somebody was like, yeah, you know, you got to get into video, and I'm in my mind, I I was like, you know what, I'm attracted to what this guy is saying. And he's giving me this free information. Why can't I have buyers or sellers come to me if I give them free information? Like, I think that it was, you know, it's, it's magnet. It's just, you draw people to you. And I was like, I like this idea. Um, so I started doing, I did actually start doing videos, uh, like my first year in real estate, just started doing videos. Now I had no idea what I was doing. I mean, I was off script. There was no plan. Um, I didn't know what I was doing at all. Um, and I've been doing videos the entire time and things have changed a lot for, from how, how I started, right. YouTube's changed a lot in, in 10 years. 
And so before it was just, I, I'd throw a video up, hey, let's talk about inspections and why they're important, or let's talk about the market, or let's talk about this, or um, whatever it was. Let's talk about a you know five-step buyer process, or what it takes to list your house, or what it takes to get the best price for your house. And I'm talking real estate. You know, and the videos had 0. 0.0 views. <laughs> it was just, it was awful. Like, just, you know, nobody was watching any of them. And we kept doing it and I kept doing it. I brought Shannon on board when she got into it. Um, we would shoot, you know, in, in beautiful model homes, we would shoot. So the, so the backdrop was always different. It was always a nice house. It was always a, you know, a sexy backdrop and stuff. And, and still, uh, no views, no nothing. Um, we do one once a month and it was just kind of like we popped it into our newsletter to, to, just to stay relevant. And we weren't really even pushing it on YouTube. I put them on YouTube, but it was my own personal channel and, you know, I'd get 10 views and stuff like that. So those were early days and, and, and that was, that was really challenging. Um, but I, I assume you're going to ask me the next question. So where do, do you want to know where it went from there or? <laughs> well, mate, I just, I've got a couple of questions here, sure. like, like that sort of stem, because this is the first sector of where most people fail. And what I mean by fail and my definition of fail is the fact that they don't move on to the next segment or they don't keep doing it when they don't get the views and they don't stay consistent and they don't know how to grow it. But let me start at the beginning here. Were you always a YouTube guy? Were you a guy that that sort of like, um, you know, instead of social media, John, you take me as somebody that's always pretty proactive. Instead of jumping on social, you'd probably jump on YouTube and try and learn something before you do, you know, be scrolling through social. Were you always somebody that was attracted to YouTube? Not necessarily. I, I'm not a guy that gets on a YouTube and just surfs and just, you know, watches Mr. Beast because you know it's entertainment. <laughs> um, I, I would go to YouTube like everybody, I'm sure does. You know, you want to fix a leaky sink, you go to YouTube and say, "How do I fix this sink?" Or, or yeah. my, you know, literally uh, two weeks ago, my refrigerator at the bottom of the freezer, it's just icing up. So I Google, I YouTube the brand and the model and find the exact problem that I'm seeing. And someone's done a video on it. There's a videos on absolutely everything. So if yeah. you ever have a question for anything, you can go to YouTube. And so that's how I used YouTube before. Nowadays, because it's a part of my everyday life, I am surfing on it all day long. I am looking at it and I'm, you know, checking metrics and stuff like that. But and um, understanding understanding the algorithms and how it all yeah. operates and all that stuff. But leading back then to the start, then, so YouTube is part something that then you're familiar with. But then there's another hurdle that I, I think is just fascinating that I think 99 percent of people can't get over is that being in front of a camera and and thinking that what they're talking about is relevant um, and you know not taking themselves too seriously, if that makes sense as well. Um, so were you always comfortable with that concept or how did you get comfortable with the concept of you in front of a camera? I have no idea. I got completely lucky. And I'll be honest because I, uh, you know, we track other, we watch other people that are in our space in Ben trying to do YouTube videos and um, they're not, I, I don't, I just, I'm just me. When I'm on camera, yeah. I'm just me. I just am who I am. But when I watch other people, then I even know them personally and I watch them and I'm like, that's not you on camera. You know, yeah, I yeah. don't know how, I don't know where the translation is. Um, and people tell me all the time, like, God, you're so good on camera. And I'm like, I don't, I don't know why. I don't know how. I don't even know what to do with my hands. I, they just, yeah. so I, I don't know. I think I just, I, I genuinely believe I'm just lucky uh, and I'm able to just be who I am on camera without really giving it, you know, giving a crap about what, what I think I look like, you know? So then, so then you were doing these YouTube videos, you were getting minimal views. You were very real estate focused in the content that you were doing from the very beginning. Um, were you looking at what other people were doing and then tried to change? Like, what is the next evolution of this now, John, is yeah. that where you guys have then, because at this point, if we were going to review your story and we were going to stop it right here, 99% of the people that are listening right now have probably tried video to some extent or they're, they're probably very curious about it, but they've stopped at this point. Mm -hmm. What, it, what, propelled you forward to keep going and to change it and to do something different or to, to make this better? Yeah. So, uh, to be honest, COVID hit and, uh, we were having, you know, a pretty good year, full breaks on everything. Uh, you know, the, the, the 14 day lockdown or whatever it was, everybody just kind of had a cow and we, we looked at each other and we're like, I don't know how we're going to get through this. I mean, everybody, you know, it's so funny because no one knew that really those two weeks were actually the calm for the greatest storm we've ever seen. But 
in those two weeks, you know, we hit the, you know, a lot of people hit the panic button. So oh, absolutely. That's, yeah. that's certainly what we did. Um, we're at home. I'm scrolling through. I don't even know how I found it. I'm just, I'm scrolling through a Kindle, like Amazon, you know, looking at books, I guess. And, uh, and I found a book on, you know, using real estate, uh, using YouTube in real estate. And I read the book and it actually kind of cemented the idea that I needed to be the digital mayor and that YouTube was a search engine and that people, when people just like what I, it, it just kind of tied everything that I've been trying to do the entire time together. It just filled in all those blanks of the DNA of making this work. So in my mind, you know, nine years ago, I'm like, okay, I go to YouTube and I put in, I need to figure out how to be a better real estate agent. And this guy pops up and he tells me how to be a better real estate agent. Okay, cool. If I'm a buyer, I want to know what it's like to live in Bend, Oregon. There's a video for somebody who's telling me what it's like to live in Bend, Oregon. And if I get to know this real estate coach that I was doing, or this real estate agent that someone else is looking at, that's me, they're going to go, I like this guy. I like his energy. I like who he is. When I'm going to buy a house, I'm going to call this guy. And it really put all that together for me. And it was like, okay, yes, you don't just have to talk about real estate because no one's going to Google what is it like to be a buyer in Bend, Oregon. They're going to say, yeah. what is Bend, Oregon like? What is it yes. like to live there? And I'm like, I'm over here crushing out videos that are like, you know, do you want to buy a home in Bend, Oregon? No one's going to, I don't want to buy a home in Bend, Oregon. I want to know what it's like in Bend. I want to know what the weather's like. I want to know what the parks are like. I want to know what the amenities are like. And so that's the, the just a, just, it was a very minor shift in the videos that we were doing before versus the videos that we're doing now. And then of course there's SEO and thumbnails and, so let's, and stuff like that. Let's go into that in a little bit later, but, but you've said this terminology now. First of all, what's the title of the book that you bought? YouTube for real estate agents, I believe. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right, cool. So something along those lines, but essentially all it was, was just, I loved what you just said there. It was the gaps that form the DNA of this. Yeah. You know, yeah. and, and that's, it's kind of what it was missing is that we believed that it just needed to be real estate content all the time, um, you know, in order to get people attracted into this. But that said is that looking at it, looking at YouTube as a search engine is something that I've really never considered because I've, I've only ever like a good example of that is that, you know, when Callistra and I moved to North America, we did it literally go into YouTube and start like looking at moving, moving countries and all of that different stuff. Yeah. Now, I guess that most people that are in the real estate business don't real realize that their business is so much bigger than that real estate business itself. Selling pro properties is just a byproduct of being that local area expert and that relationship manager, you know, like it's really, mm -hmm. really is, but that digital mayor, is that what you called it? Yeah. Being the digital mayor. Um, so if, you know, whatever questions somebody might have about your city, like I said, where's the best breakfast spot? Where's the best lunch spot? Uh, check out all the food trucks, check out our breweries, um, the recreation, all that kind of stuff, whatever anybody wants to know about your town. But not only that, we're, we do neighborhood tours. We'll take you through, you know, I, I was looking actually today, I think we've got 17 different neighborhood tours where we go through the whole neighborhood. We show it, we show the types of homes in it, how many homes are in it all that kind of stuff, the history of the neighborhood, where it came from, what's going on in it. Anything anybody wants to know about the town, we try to create, you know, the cost of living in that city, whatever it is. Those are the types of videos that we're creating and where people are legitimately looking them up. Uh, one of the things that was in the book that I didn't understand is you can go and you can check the popularity of certain search terms. You know, when you just start typing something into Google, it kind of auto fills the rest, right? Sometimes it sees mm -hmm. where you're going and it's like, ah, you want to know about this, but there's actually other metrics. There's other plugins that you can add on to, to your browser and you can just start putting stuff in moving to Bend, Oregon, enter, and it'll show you related key searches. It'll show you how expensive it is if you want to buy ads that are related to that. It'll tell you how competitive that particular keyword marketplace is. It'll can tell you how many times a month people search that. So that was another What is know, what is that? Well what it I'm I'm curious. What is that? Product? Um it's called it's called keywords everywhere. Is that it? Yeah. Key I'm see, I'm looking around. Everywhere. So yeah, that's called, something that Yep. 
Yeah, so that's something that just it shows you the popularity of those individual searches. Yes, it'll it, you can literally put in. I mean, it is all sorts of um, you know SEO keyword analysis. So it'll show you like again how many times it's been searched this month on a monthly thing. It'll show you an annual thing. So you know it'll show like in Bend, Oregon, you could be like, uh, uh, what is the snowfall or no, what's the uh, the mountain? What are the inches of snow in the mountain? That'll spike in January and February, right? Because everybody wants to know how many inches are from Bachelor right now, right? Or something will spike. This, the keywords will spike, you know, uh, great places to hike in Bend, Oregon. It'll spike in the summer. So you can see some of these trends. And it was actually funny, just like just the end of last summer, I realized a huge one that we hadn't tapped yet. And it was Sun River. Sun River's a resort community yeah. down south below us in Bend, yep, right? Yep. And I hadn't done a video on it in a year and a half of doing these videos. And I was like, oh my gosh, how did I miss Sun River? Because the actual hits that it gets, like the volume of traffic that it gets is huge. So it is our number, uh, I think it's like our number number three video right now. Wow. Uh, wow. And we only did it, well, it's on a monthly rolling thing, right? On a month. But it's like our number, th- number three videos for our overall hits every month for like the last six months in a row. And it's only been out for probably nine months. Uh, because it gets a huge, so you're just looking for things that get a lot of traction, a lot of searches, a lot of hits, right? Yep. And I guess that, that, so John, this is, this is the other part. You, you guys, you guys sort of discovered, um, the digital, the digital mayor side of things from that book. But then the other thing that you started to find, because I've, I've sort of been and progressed along this journey with you guys, as you've sort of gone along, because I'm fascinated by this and the business that you've built by it. I think it's the way of real estate for the future. I think there's a great deal of stuff here that people need to really grasp, um, you know, because it is a really big metric for the future of, I think our business, but the 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 part that fascinated we, me was then your obsession into it in the sense that you guys found people a lot of people in Canada um, that you guys then started to sort of model and look at what they're doing with their uh, property videos mm-hmm. and look at what they're doing as well but then also you found a conference a video real estate video conference that then you guys started to go to I think this year was your second time there mm-hmm. and you've really started to buy into the community. One, because of the results, which we'll get to the results here shortly. I don't want to dive down too deeply into that. But talk to me about your obsession of the people that you started to follow in this and then the and then the and then the conferences that you started to go to. Yeah. Um, well, you're right. Well, get, I, I suppose we can get to the results in a second, but the results were really the first part that was like, okay, to quote Ben Brady, this shit works. So <laughs> it was it was it was legitimately like, wow. Um it's a long process and it requires a lot of dedication to get into it. The consistency is the number one thing. We see people come up in our space all the time that start it. We see their channel. Mm. We can tell that they read the book. We can tell that they're doing steps A, step B, step C. They're going through it. They'll get to six months in. They've got six months worth of videos. The phone's about to ring, but they don't just they just don't know it yet. And then they quit. Um there are metrics on YouTube. There are plugins on YouTube where you can see what other people's metrics are. You can see how many views they're getting per month versus you. You can see how many uh, subscribers are getting versus you. You can see how many videos they put out versus you. So I'm tracking these, you know, competitors, quote competitors, and it's like, oh man, they're they're bringing it. They're they're coming on. Like they're they're going to legit take some of our YouTube market share, if you will, um, which is fine. But we're tracking them to see what's going on, and then they'll just stop posting one day and. I think it's because the consistency is the hardest part. So once Mm. we started seeing results and and getting results and getting leads and getting business, yeah, I mean, we just stepped on the gas. It was just, there's no way we're stopping this now. It is foot to the pedal to the metal from here on out. And so that's when uh, there are communities of people, there's agents all across the country that are doing this same formula that have you know, read this book or found these uh, Facebook groups of people where we all support each other and we give each other tips and advice and, and stuff like that. And then of course there are conferences as well that you can go to uh, where, you know, they bring in guests that are crushing the YouTube game all across the country. And uh, you know, we get to learn from them firsthand. So it's, 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 it's a very, very, very cool thing. So, so again, is that the community element of this and that, that, is it that validation of that others are doing it and the success that they're seeing? Did that really help outside of the success that you guys were happen- having? But is it that communal feel of the others and seeing what they're doing that really helped spur the creativity on? So, yeah, uh, I would say that A, 
Uh, well, okay. So if there wasn't a community and I just found this book and I just started doing it my way and I got results, I'm down to keep going because the, re- the results are so good. So I would just keep doing it. But yes, I would also say that the community that that we're involved with does help to fuel the creativity. I mean, after doing this for um, you know a full year after the, the conference ahead of time, I'm depleted. I'm exhausted. I'm wasted. I'm just like, I don't want to shoot another video at all. Mm-hmm. Don't want to do it. Then I'll go to the conference, learn some new tricks, learn some new uh, tactics, and I come back refreshed and ready to go. So that's, I mean, and that's kind of where I'm at right now. I, I shot three videos in one day last week, and uh, that was exhausting. But uh, but it's good because it's like, okay, now I'm just I'm jogging with new ideas, just like you said before. Where do these ideas come from? It's like, oh man, we could just do that, do that, do that, do that. And before I know it, we're we're just cranking again. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, let, let's go into it because I'm sure people are, are, are very curious to hear this because they need a lot of people need evidence to defeat disbelief in their mind that oh, you can't grow a business or videos and whatever it is. But you know, talk to me about the results, mate. Like the last time yeah. that you and I sat down when I was up there, I think it was in April um, when we were opening up the office up in Redmond. Is that you know we were talking about you guys just being at the conference and everything that was going on there, but then you'd had something like eight or nine buyer calls and inbound seller stuff in just that week like like give me an idea of what it started off and where you saw it to where it is now and what you're seeing from a consistency perspective yeah so um th- where it started off <sighs> seriously we did videos for six months and nothing happened and we're continuing to do it and we're just like i mean it was covid so it was busy i don't even know how mm. i did it all um but we did it and and I was doing videos for like six months. We took a vacation. So I had a few weeks off here and there, but the consistency is what YouTube really rewards you. So you do a video a week. It's a 10, it's a seven to 12 minute video every single week on your community, different yep. topics, different themes, different everything. And it just wasn't, it, it you know, <sighs> is this going to happen? Then one day the phone rings, it's like October phone rings. Hey, hi. Um, this is kind of awkward, but We saw you on YouTube and we've actually been watching you for quite a while. We love your videos and we're moving to Bend. I was in disbelief. Shannon tells the story. She's like, his face on the phone was just like of shock. Like he couldn't even believe that they were, they were saying this. (laughs) We had him in contract in two weeks. I mean, it was two weeks later to the date we had him in contract. Uh, So we closed, you know, four or five weeks after that. And then the phone rang again and we had another one. And then the phone rang again. And then we're three or four transactions in going, holy crap. And then the phone starts ringing. Um, it was about every two or three weeks. And then it started ringing every week. Every week we'd get a call one way or the other. It would either come in through our uh, website or it was be a DM on Instagram or it would be, uh, or, or it would just be, or just be a comment on our YouTube thing saying, Hey, I'm going to be there in May. I'd like to look at some houses. Okay. Then I comment back, we get their phone number and boom. It just started happening literally every week. And so, well, lately it's, yeah, now it's sometimes we get three or four calls in a week. And it's just built and it's just snowballed from there. Like I just, this is the thing that like, again, from a context perspective that I'll make sure that I give to everybody in the introduction of the episode of the volume that you guys are pulling out, like your volume, like there's a very few months that I don't call you and Shannon and congratulate you for being in the top 20 in our, in our entire network, you know, and, and being right in amongst the very, very top people. I guess that the format to this though, that I was so amazed about when sitting down with you guys in the first degree is that one, there was a great deal of people that sort of was very shut down to the concept of this in the first instance of the people that you might have talked to external to our company and external to the office. And maybe even some people in the office were like, oh, I don't know if this is the best use of your time, guys, when you first started. But then obviously then starting to get results and then seeing the type of results that you were getting, they were just different because here's a difference. Like some people go, might be sitting there going, oh, well, I can buy buyer leads from Zillow and I don't have to do videos every week. There is a gigantic difference in this folks that I need you to know. And I, John, I want you to talk about the relationship that is already built with these people when they reach out to you. Okay. Cause it's the best part of this by a mile. The best part about video is that, okay, f- well, first let's go back to f- for a second on, on why people find you and why it snowballs. Cause you, you mentioned the word snowball. It snowballs because YouTube is forever. It's always out there. 
Um, whereas, uh, you know, short form, like short form, like Instagram, TikToks, real mm. stuff like that, that has, you know, those videos have the lifespan of a gnat. They're there for 24 hours and then they die. Sometimes yep. they take off and they go viral and you'll get 10,000 views. Most of the time they're going to sit there, going to get a few hundred views and that's going to be that. YouTube, because it's a search engine, people will always be searching. What is it like to live in Bend, Oregon? And so that's where our subscriber base just continues to grow and grow and grow and grow and grow. And the video, you know, one of our first videos is still to this day, our strongest and best video because it just has more time. There are other videos now, like our videos today are way better than our videos from two years ago, but our videos from two years ago have been there for two years. They've, they've mm. gotten, you know, searches. They've been searched for two years straight. They have more views and, 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 that's how we're building subscribers. And so that's where the snowball thing, we've got people that, you know, they'll, they'll watch us for a couple of weeks and then they call us and it's done. We, they, they call us, we put them in contract, they're done. We have people that have been watching us for six months, for a year, for two years. In fact, gosh, last summer, somebody called office calls me. I'm not at the office. Somebody calls me in the office. I'm like, Hey, what's going on? Hey, uh, so-and-so's here. What? I haven't heard from this guy in a year and a half. He was stationed in Germany. Um, he was, he was, uh, you know, he's in, he's in the military. He was stationed in Germany. He's getting ready to retire and he's going to move to bend, but he has to wait a couple of years. And we had a co phone conversation, you know, that, that was a year and a half. That was like two years ago now. I'm like, okay, whatever. No, no, no. He called. He's in town. He was just visiting. He was literally just visiting. He's still not ready to buy in bend. <laughs> he was still not ready, <laughs> but he was visiting. He reached out. He walked into the office. He's like, Hey, is John here? Okay, I'll give him a call. We went out to we went out for beers that afternoon, and he's like, "Yep, he's already referred to somebody else who we have closed a transaction with, and he will return probably next year to actually finally buy his house." So this is a long term relationship built thing. Now, getting to the part about those relationships that we build, um, it works whether you know them or not because they know you. They've been watching you for weeks or months or sometimes years. They know you, they like you, they trust you. That's the business, right? So I don't have to build a relationship with them. They're building the relationship with me. They know me. They know us. They'll say things like when we're like, you know, showing homes, they'll say things like, oh, I, you know, I know you used to run a coffee shop. I'm like, I don't even remember talking about that in any of my videos. They know more about me than I do sometimes. They're just like, yeah, yeah, you said that that one time. And I'm like, yeah, I did. Yeah. So it's the fact it it is video is incredible because no matter what, everyone is influenced by it. Yeah. The Instagram, how many people are influenced? That they're, they're called influencers now. Whether you're an actual influencer, you're branded, you're titled, you're verified, whatever it's called, if people are watching you, they're being influenced by you. They're just, their thumbs scrolling, they're seeing it. I mean, I've bought t-shirts on Instagram because I see the freaking ads all the time. I'm like, okay, we're getting true classic tees or whatever, because it's just, you're being influenced, but you can't help it. So if you're constantly in front of people, it helps if your message is good, right? But if you're constantly in front of people, you are influencing people. And so that's awesome because when those leads come in, it's already built in. They know you, they like you, yeah. they trust you. And that's when that was one of the things that where it really dropped for me when you were telling me about this is that when we meet these people, they already know us. Like the rapport is already built. Yeah. They already trust us. They already they really do from the volume of time they've really spent with us without actually spending the time with us. There was one of my favorite stories was actually you at the grocery store and someone's come up to you and they're like, Oh, you're that guy. <laughs> No, it's better than that. Yeah. So he calls out from across the store. He's like, I didn't think famous YouTubers bought their own groceries. I'm like, huh? What are you? And I'm like blushing. I'm like, oh my God, what is going on right now? And we, wa I walked over to him. Shannon was like looking for cheeses. I walk over to this guy. I'm like, hey, you know, how's it going? My name's like, hey, funny story. We were actually just thinking about calling you. And I'm like, what? Well, we had this other agent. We were looking for this property. And uh, we told her about it and she said, okay, I'll get on it. And she got back to us, you know, a week later and the property had sold and we were really pissed because, you know, whatever, we didn't, we didn't have a shot at it. And, uh, and we were kind of, we were kind of really frustrated with this agent, not to, you know, be disparaging to other agents, but um, they wanted to call, they, they, they're like, we, we feel like we should have called you. I'm like, oh, well, Hey, you know, if anything else comes up, you want to, you know, you want to look for other homes in the future that I would love to love to chat. Let me know. It was 4th of July weekend. They called the very next, the next business day after that weekend. They said, you'll never guess what. Uh, hi, what? 
the home came back in the market. Will you write it up for us? We had him in contract in a week. Wow. It was done. It's it's like these stories are incredible. Back in 2020 or 2021, really, when things were just nuts and every home had 20 to 30 offers on it, and you were going five to 10% over asking here in this market, we had an incredibly high success rate because our buyers who are relocating to the area had so much trust in us and knew they wanted to live here and knew the market was bonkers because we were telling them on the on the channel every week how bonkers the market is they would see a house that they wanted or you know the only house that was available and they would say john do what it takes to win the house whereas other agents were trying to educate their clients on look I know we haven't known each other very long. I know you're referred by somebody, or I know you just walked into an open house, but we're gonna have to we're gonna have to go 10% over asking. And those clients are going, no way. And then yeah. they fail and then they lose and then they lose and then they lose and then they lose. And eventually they get frustrated. Well, our clients already know this. They already trust us completely. And they say, Looks like it's gonna be a hot house, guys. Look like there's gonna be 10 to 15 offers on it. And they say, Okay, well, what do you really think it's gonna take to win? Well, I think it's gonna I think it's gonna take 10% over. But you know, I, I understand if you don't want to pay that. I'm like, nope, whatever it takes to win. We want to, we trust you. We want to win the house. And our success yeah. rate during those times were crazy. Yeah, but if you think about it, John, like, like, like you and Shannon always. If I was gonna, if I called you and you, we were just talking in general. You would tell tell us about situations where you would win out most of the time. Like there were very few situations that you guys wouldn't be at the top there because of the total trust that you had from your clients. Which, mm -hmm. again, not saying that it's entirely. I don't want to give. I don't want to say that that's a hundred percent the YouTube side of the business, but it's got to be a big portion of that. There's obviously you and Shannon being very good at what you do and all of those types of things yeah. as well. But realistically is that there is this element of trust that's already been taken. They've already gone through from all of that stuff itself. Yeah. But there's a part of this that I sort of want to segue to because there's a greater picture in all of this as well. Um, and I'll come back and we'll talk a little bit more about the the technicalities of how you shoot a video and what you do and all of that type of stuff. But I want to focus on this thought that's in my head at the moment. You, Shannon, and I have been speaking for a long time now about building your team out. Mm -hmm. And the reason that, that we've been talking about this is because I'm very excited about where your business goes to next because there's so many teams that I believe that are very vulnerable out there at the moment with – with um, all of these lead platforms that could go away. So for example, the real traditional sense of building a team in real estate, as you already know, is that you know you guys become pretty decent agents yourself. You start buying leads off Zillow or wherever it may be, or you start doing a high volume of listings and then you start building a team underneath you. And then those people sort of grow within you and then they move on and then you've constantly got to continue to replace the team members. We're excited about your business because of the sustainability of you guys being the front people of that business. And what I mean by that is that there's this constant funnel that keeps coming in through your YouTube channel mm -hmm. that then you can then feed through out to your team members. And it's this self-sustaining business model that I really haven't seen in a very long time in real estate outside of just listing, 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 and this high volume of listing that might come from you know, maybe builder relationships or things along those lines. This is probably the most self-sustaining model that I've seen in a very long time that could build a very ongoing team because at the end of the day, the leads come in through you guys. They've built a relationship with you and Shannon because they've seen you on video and then you can move them through delicately to some of your team members in order to help them and grow that team from a very sustaining point of view. I guess that what is your view for the future with a team? Like, like, how do you see this for the future for you guys? What do you see your business if we were going to get really maybe even a bit of delusions of grandeur here, mate? You and I do this constantly when we're together. Is that we think pretty big together? Is that sure. what does it look? What does it look like for the future for the YouTube yeah. business for for your team? All of those things. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, to be honest, yeah. The 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 inbound. So this is to be to be very clear. This is most of this YouTube formula is currently inbound buyer traffic, you know, relocation traffic is kind of what it is kind of the niche there. But what we are starting to morph it into is, is just a general, it, it's just a general like tourism channel altogether, but not only that, but, but news and information for Bend, it's well, just like news. So like local people, we're trying to get local people on board right now. We're starting to do actual live streams. Uh, we did one a few weeks ago. We're going to get doing one tomorrow, actually, where we're just talking about current events, new developments that are coming to the city, whether they're infrastructure, like roads, stuff like that, or whether they're actual new neighborhood developments. Um, we're going to have guests on board so that people can actually 
it's almost like the news where people in town are just as interested in watching it as somebody coming from out of the area. And so what we really want to try to do is all of the inbound buyer traffic is great. I, I suspect that at some point we'll cap out because there's only so many people that can move to Bend at one time. Um, and not, 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 not to say that I think we're going to get all of it, but you know, the, the idea is certainly to build a business that, that has tremendous inbound buyer leads, but also inbound, uh, seller leads. Right. And so if we can build a business like that, that's kind of the Holy grail, I would think, you know, so we can bring on buyers agents, we can handle all of the listings. And, and what's really funny is this, this YouTube thing has, uh, again, is, it is, it is so spoiled us because the the quality of the leads is so good because again they already know you're like you trust they're already your best friend you just don't even know it yet um and, and we've just got so many classic examples of so many great great um you know people that um that when we get another lead from some other source and the transaction doesn't go as well we're scratching our heads like what happened like that was not a, <laughs> that was not a fun smooth transaction and then we we look at the source and we're like oh that was a referral from somebody from a few years ago. <laughs> like that wasn't one of our YouTube leads that, you know, that we'd built that trust with, but looking forward in the future, what we do want to see is, um, yeah, is building out a team to where, uh, you know, anybody in central Oregon recognizes us as a real estate, you know, kind of powerhouse and, and we can have a team underneath us with, you know, with five, 10, 15 agents, I don't know, you, you said delusions of grandeur. So that's where we'll go with that. And, yeah. uh, and again, it'll be an equal balance of, of buyers and sellers. Now, how do you, how do you see your role in that, mate? Because at the end of the day, you and Shannon are just like, I know that you're moving to more of a news. Like, I love the idea of you guys then bringing more of the local community into play now to, that can then appeal to more sellers and things along those lines. I think that, you know, the, the, the definition and the reality of, of what you guys are, uh, are leading into is endless, really. I love the idea of it being a, a travel channel, the news channel, all of those different things. But if you were going to sort of look at more of a, I guess, role for you two is that essentially your role is selling real estate at the moment, but it's also the people that are in front of the camera. It's doing the production. I know you've just brought on like a sort of a production team that, mm -hmm. you know, you've started to partner with. Does your role evolve to just focusing on the video side of it, Shannon focusing on the real estate side of it? Like how does that structure look for you guys in the future, do you think? Yeah, I think that it, um, <clears throat> there's a, a so there's a line in in uh, one of the new Spider Man Marvel Spider Man movies with the guy in the chair, like Spider Man's assistant, like Spider Man Spider Man's guy in the chair. He just kind of handles all the background stuff, right? Uh, Shannon's kind of taken to that a little bit, and I'm not Spider Man by any means, but I'm I'm the one on camera. <laughs> I'm I'm kind of the one. It's we've kind of just found our our way that way, where I'm kind of the one on camera. Um, and, and she's, you know, kind of taking care of the stuff in the background. And so that's, that's kind of where we're going at this moment. Um, we're still, there's still a lot of questions we have yet to answer ourselves as to our team and where it's going to go to be perfectly honest with you. We've, uh, we've looked at hiring a few different times without the results that we really wanted. And it's turned out to be an incredible blessing because now the market's down by 50%. So we're in a position where we're like, okay, cool. I feel like we dodged a bullet there it is going to start picking up. And as it does, we're going to be ready to catch that on the upswing. Right. So, um, we're still, you know, we're still kind of focusing on getting all of our ducks in a row for this growth that we do see coming. Yep. Um, the channel's doing really well, you know, we're, we're not getting as many leads as we used to, but that's to be expected, right? Because, because everything is down a bunch, but we're yep. still getting a ton of views. We're still getting a ton of subscribers. Um, we're still getting a ton of people that are, that are, you know, they're reaching out. They're just not, ready yet. So there, there could be, you know, if we see interest rates drop a full point or more, the phone could just absolutely explode, which I'm a little yeah. nervous for, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I guess that the, the other part of this, the other part of this that I'm, I'm curious about as well is that what, what does it take for you, for people to start? Because I feel like, John, I think that people, uh, I, I think that they need to have everything and it needs to be perfect in order for them to start. What would you, somebody listening right now that's listening to this going, man, I want to grow something like what they're doing and I really want to get on this page. I really want to do this. Knowing what you know now and what you've been through, what would you tell yourself if they were on the other end of the phone and they're like, John, it's John, but it's two years ago. What would you tell them? Don't give up. <laughs> 
Uh, it is the, the absolute key to this is consistency. Um, it, it, it's so, it has to be consistency. Uh, there is uh, a group in our, um, you know, in our market right now that started, I mean, they probably only started six months ago and they are smashing it. They're killing it. They're, they're not on our heels, but I can see them. People do this a lot, but if they stick with it, they'll be right there with us at some point, hopefully not because we've got so many years ahead of them, but they're putting out, you know, we're putting out uh, two videos a week. So we're doing eight video. One's a short and one's a long form, the long form. And then, you know, whatever, like kind of the real. And, uh, but they're doing like 15 to 20 videos a month. And they're just flooding the market with all of this content. Now, I don't necessarily think it's better than ours. Uh-oh, hang on. You know what? My battery's low and I got to tell you. I gotta That's okay. Right no worries. That's okay. All good. All good. This is part of the, this is part of the uh, ins and out of YouTubing folks is, uh, <laughs> is that, is that we've got to make sure the equipment's all charged up in order to keep going. <laughs> but, but, it was good. But, I had like, a full so, charge. <laughs> but, but I guess that, so do you, is it, you know, is it one of those things that you feel threatened by them or do you feel like it's good to have more proof of concept? What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, no, uh, I, at first I was really threatened by it. Um, but now it's good because if I miss a video, if I miss a concept and they hit on it, well, the way the algorithm works, the algorithm is going to know that this person is looking to move to Bend and they might have found them first because of a video that they did, but they'll find us next because the algorithm will go, oh, you need to see videos like this and it'll put them all together. Uh. So if you're searching for something that I haven't had, if I have that I didn't have any search on, uh, the, it'll know, like the algorithm will find these people that are looking to move to Bend. It's just, it's just kind of how it works. And then it'll start recommending everyone that's in the space. Well, yeah. I'm in the space for more and longer and have better views and a better traction than anybody else. So eventually they're going to stumble upon my video also. So I think it's a good thing because it's going to allow all of us to get exposed to each other and to get exposed to all the buyers at the same time. And then it, then it comes down to who are they going to actually, you know, vibe with the best, right? Who are they actually yeah. going to develop that relationship with? Who are they going to call when the time comes? what's a shooting schedule look like for you mate like give me an idea of a regular month for you like are you were saying that you're putting out one video a week there at one point now you're putting out two a week you're shooting three in one day what does it look like for you from a schedule perspective in a month to yeah. get everything sort of fi figured out well yeah i mean we just we have to know that we've got to do four videos in a month period four long form videos in a month and now we're going to a live stream every right now this this the first few first couple. We might do it once a month. We might do it once every three weeks, but I want to get it to once every two weeks. So every two weeks will be a live stream. It'll effectively be six long form videos a month. And then the shorts are just, I mean, just like what you guys do with the shorts, you're just going to cut, cut down part of the interview. That sounded really good. We're going to throw that up on, on the shorts or the reels or the Instagram, the TikTok stuff like that. Um, that's just kind of like a bonus. So yeah, the way the schedule works is <laughs> it doesn't work. <laughs> we, uh, the way it worked before I had the production team was every week I had to, I had to bang out something. I had, I had to, I had to shoot something. I didn't know what it was always going to be about. Um, half the time I was just kind of making it up on the fly. Um, getting B roll was terrible. It was really hard. I'm just using my cell phone and, 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 it, and again, this all works. Um, the, using a cell phone, not having the professional setup, whatever, whatever you have available to you works. I had to go out and get my drone license because drone footage is sexy and I had to have that. And, uh, you know, now that I'm attuned to YouTube, you find, you hear all these stories on YouTube about people who got totally, that are YouTubers that are entertainers, they get smashed for not having a drone license. So I'm like, all right, I better all get right. that. That was actually really hard. It was really hard. <laughs> like I'm a full blown pilot now, almost. <laughs> but um, so uh, yeah, uh, now we have a production team. Uh, we, we're a little bit more organized. We usually have an idea of the videos that we're gonna do for the full month. Um, I write all the scripts for all of the videos myself. They're usually between two or three pages written on like a you know Google Doc, and uh, and then we'll show up on location, or I'll shoot it like here in my studio, talk about what I'm talking about. And yeah, it's sometimes right now it's summer. So we try to pack in as many videos as we can during the summer because it looks so great outside. We're doing yeah, like yeah, tours, yeah. Ben, it's great. so beautiful. Yeah, it's yeah. just it's just stunning here. So we try to capture it as much as possible. The wintertime, I'm doing a lot of studio videos like here uh, just because I don't want to go outside. It's cold outside and it's, and it's gross and you know gray and stuff like that. So, um, but yeah, if we can shoot two or three videos 
Obviously, we're shooting four a month, but if we can shoot six to eight a month, that's great. That way we can stockpile some for the winter. Um, that's kind of the idea. Last few weeks, we've been we've been shooting two a week. So we're trying to get ahead of that. Well, John, I, I think that there's, from a final statement perspective as we wrap this up, is that there's one thing that you've always been very generous with with everybody within our network that we obviously operate in is that you've always been very generous with your time with the people that are very fascinated with the video side of things. Um, obviously, we'll have all the links to your page and everything in the show notes here. Anybody comfortable reaching out to John should do it because ultimately he is gone through the trials and tribulations that so many of you probably uh, would have to go through. He's already done that for you. Um, I have to commend you and Shannon on the business that you're operating. You guys are, we're very, very proud of you within our network. And ultimately, I think that what you guys are doing is absolutely stellar in many, many formats. But thanks for sharing all of your insights. There's no doubt there's going to be questions. There's going to be follow-ups. And no doubt you'll probably feature on the podcast again, just with the nature of, we didn't even get into dive into the SEO side of stuff or anything like that. Oh man! So I think we're going to have to do part two of this, mate. Yeah, I so, could go forever. Like this is, I'm a, I just, I've become, I'm a, such a huge nerd for this. I could absolutely go forever. I'm just, I literally have my analytics up on my other screen right here. I'm just like, yeah, we could talk about a whole lot more right here. <laughs> <laughs> well, again, mate, we appreciate the uh, the YouTube for dummies guide that you've given us so far. Um, we might have to do the advanced episode later on. But again, thanks so much for joining us on Rethink Real Estate. Awesome. Thanks so much, man. Uh, my pleasure. And uh, yeah, by the way, the podcast is doing great. I'm watching it or listening to it uh, every week. It's awesome. You're doing a great job. Uh, congratulations to you as well. Thank you, buddy. So about 75% of our audience hasn't liked, followed, or subscribed to our podcast. It would mean the world to us, and it would help this podcast more than you know to expand our reach if you were to like, follow, or subscribe on any of the platforms that you're watching or listening on. Thanks again.